Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at how to multi-track record a performance from the sensory percussion plugin into Ableton Live. Then we're going to explore how we can use that multi-track recording to enhance and inform our performance. Now that you know what this video is about, you can either watch something else with more VFX or stay with me to become a power user. So I was staying up too late trying to consolidate my sample library and I came across these really rad flutter flute sounds. It took me back to when I was playing a show with Max, and he performed a phase composition using flute samples, and it was incredible. Rather than literally playing the phasing like Max did, I felt inspired to create sequences of different lengths per drum and let them permutate as they cycle differently, and let that do the phasing. You can see I have a sequence of 9 samples on my kick, 10 samples on my snare, 11 on the tom 1 and 12 on tom 2. Rather than setting these samples to cycle, which would allow me to play each sample once and then it would move on to the next, I opted to use to control mode and I have this LFO over here driving all of those samplers to advance them in sync. This gives me a lot more freedom to play, to deviate from playing each note one at a time. I could play no a note as many times as I want, or not at all, and all the samplers will stay in sync because of this LFO. I also have simple drum sounds on each drum, on separate samplers, so I can simultaneously play a melodic part and a drum part. The phasing of these melodic samples will go on for a really, really long time before ever repeating and some parts get pretty crunchy harmonically, so I decided to end it at a particularly resolved point, and I set up this sampler with lots of silent samples, and then a nice crotale sample at as the 48th sample to signal the end. If you've ever delved this far into uh, navigating sample lists, you might appreciate this trick. I have this envelope controller set for the whole kit, and basically all this does is if, if nothing is played for five seconds, the envelope will go high and I set that to reset all of these samplers. This is really handy since who knows how long it would take for all of these samplers to start at one at the same time. And there's no chance of me accidentally triggering the reset unless I just happen to forget to play anything for five seconds. So I have all of this loaded up in the plugin within Ableton. And as you may already know, we can get separate audio out from the plugin for each drum. I can use this setup to record my performance and upload it to the web for free listening, and this is great, but having a separate track for each drum channel isn't all that helpful when I have a melodic and percussive sound already mixed in there. Don't let the fear of the unknown stop you from using more than one instance of sensory percussion. By doing this, we can use instance 1 for melodic sounds, and then instance 2 for our drums. Just go through and deactivate the appropriate tracks in each instance. Okay, I went ahead and added a second set of input tracks to route into our second instance of sensory percussion. But look at this. I now have an individual track for each melodic drum track and each percussive drum track. Let's go ahead and record this and do some basic mixing. So here's my recording and a basic mix. Here you can see some automation of some effects and you can see that I decided to take the drums out for some sections and add some filtering. That's great, now we can get a great mix and put this stuff out for people to hear. But here's something radical we can do at this point. We can actually delete our recording, but keep the automation in the mix, and then perform the song into our mix. I think this is a game changer for getting a better recording, because you're playing according to how it's going to sound in its final form. And you could even use this automation and mix for a performance. I'll probably put this automation into clips so it fits nicely into my normal workflow in session view. But if you're an arrangement person, you can totally play with this as is. Just make sure you're monitoring from the individual audio tracks that have the automation on them and not the plugin. I hope you find this helpful and empowering for capturing your sensory percussion endeavors in greater detail and enhancing your live show. 
You can get the files for this song as well as all the files for all my other tutorials on my Patreon or from my website. Links are in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll play us out by re-recording this song into my mix and audio.